Hey everyone, in this video we're taking a close look at the Robert Axel Project, which is a small company out of Bend, Oregon, who has cornered the market on bicycle through axles with their massive selection of through axles for bikes and bike trailers, and their impressive Axle Finder tool, which is a searchable database of axles for over 6,000 bikes and trailers. That's a lot of axles. Now in this video, I'm certainly gonna review some of their products, but I also wanna discuss how I came to find the Robert Axle Project, because I think it may echo some of your experiences as well. So let's get right into it. So first, why do you need axles? Well, they hold your wheel to your bike, so they're kind of a critical component. Critical, yes, but often overlooked. And as the industry has gradually migrated toward adopting the through axle design, sizing standards have unfortunately gone awry. Now just to give you a sense for what I mean, sizing of a typical through axle generally requires you to specify the diameter. Now that's the easy part, but then you need to specify the length. Now it should be easy, right? But then you realize there's the overall length, which is the measurement from the base of the axle head to the tip of the threads. And then there's the more commonly used overlock nut dimension, or OLD, which is the dimension between the inner faces of the fork or frame dropouts. Some typical OLDs in millimeters for frames are 130, 135, 142, 148, 157, and even 197 on some fat bikes. And then just to make sure it's a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, the 148 millimeter dimension is also referred to as boost spacing and the 157 millimeter dimension is appropriately called Super Boost. Now the fork also has a variety of different OLD standards, but I won't get into those. Now on top of all this, the thread pitch across different frames and forks aren't quite standard either. Now the thread pitch is measured from the tip of one thread to the next when looking at a cross section of the axle as measured in millimeters. Now fortunately, and I suppose we should be lucky, there are only three different thread pitches that are commonly used in the industry. Now with so many different combinations of parameters available, it can make your head spin when trying to find replacement axles for your bikes. Now, according to Eric, who works at the Robert Axle Project, the biggest challenge is to get people to understand that dropout designs vary in width. So there's no such thing as a boost axle or 142 by 12 axle. With some thin dropouts, an axle can be just 11 millimeters longer than the hub, where on some full suspension designs, it can be up to 52 millimeters longer. So what this means is that even if you get the general specs right, for instance, a 148 by 12 boost rear mountain bike axle, the overall length can vary from bike to bike. And if you're not careful, you could end up with an axle that extends way past the dropout or only partially threads into the dropout, neither of which you want. It's actually pretty crazy. Now what actually motivated me to replace my through axles on my bikes was really that I didn't like the stock Maxil through axle that came on my Santa Cruz Hightower. The pseudo quick release design is, in my opinion, poorly executed and somewhat obsolete. These little tabs that bear the entire tightening or loosening torque are so easy to bend, and once they are bent, it makes removing your wheel a bigger challenge than necessary. Also, they're just kind of bulky and unnecessary, and like many of you, I carry a multi-tool with the right size hex wrench on basically every ride that I go on. In my experience too, the lever handle is just excess metal that can get snagged on brush or scrape against rocks as you're riding. In my opinion, a plain hex head through axle is the way to go on just about all bikes, and I think it just looks way cleaner too. So as I started down what became a rabbit hole of through axle research, I happened upon the Robert Axle Project, a company that identified this gap in the market and went all in. So I'll just show you quickly how it works. It's really simple as the guided search has you simply select your bike brand and specify any particular details. And that's pretty much it. It spits out the exact axle specifications you need with a 100% guarantee on sizing to boot. Now the axles themselves are machined in-house from a hard anodized 7075 aluminum and they all feature a 6mm hex head designed to be more robust than the 5mm hex head found on some models. Also, for bike-only axles, there are actually two options. The Lightning Bolt-On Axle, which I have here, are hollow and designed to be as lightweight and low profile as possible. Then, for riders who are really tough on their stuff, there's also the Thunder Bolt-On Through Axle, which is literally a solid core through axle and claimed to be the strongest through axle on the market. Now, I received a set of axles for both of my bikes, and the quality is simply amazing. The exact sizing and all the specifications are very clearly printed on each axle, which is something that's sorely missing from many stock axles. 
Now it goes without saying, but all of these axles fit perfectly, and for my Specialized Diverge, the axle even came with the proper tapered spacers, because apparently my bike uses Sinte-style dropouts, which I didn't even know was a thing. Apparently they know more about my bike than I do. Now I said bike-only axles because the company also makes axles for different purposes, including kid trailers, single and double wheel cargo trailers, and even cycling trainers. In fact, the company actually got its start when identifying that there were no good options for mounting a bob trailer to bikes with through axles. Yes, that's right, there's no one at the company actually named Robert or Bob. It all started with the Bob brand trailer. So Bob trailer, Bob short for Robert, and you get, of course, the Robert Axle Project. Fun fact. Now the axles that I received have been on both my bikes for several weeks now, and have really been a set it and forget it upgrade from the stock axles. The look is really clean and I'm no longer worried about the axle handles scraping against rocks on my mountain bike, and I'm also relieved that anytime I need to reference my axle size and dimensions, it's literally printed on the axles themselves. Now, it's not as though I was losing sleep, wondering if I'd forget whether I used boost spacing or not, but it's nice to know that the information is readily available if or when I need it in the future. Now as a bonus, the company also partners with Hexlox, which is an add-on security feature that uses a magnetic insert on your axle head that can only be removed using the unique magnetic key. Now without this key, the insert is virtually impossible to remove and consequently makes removing the bolt impossible. Now this is a really nice feature if you periodically lock your bike up and leave it unattended as it makes stealing the wheels or seat posts or other bolt-on peripherals much more difficult. And lastly, they even make this cool dummy axle called the drive through with a bit of tongue-in-cheek branding referencing the West Coast-based drive through chain in an out Burger, one of my personal favorites. Now this is really helpful when cleaning your bike or for any time you throw your bike on the stand and remove the rear wheel. It allows you to fully cycle through the gears and it eliminates the slack chain dangling from the chain stays while you work on your bike. All right, so was this a video dedicated to bike through axles? Yeah, yeah it was. But truthfully, I think in general, the through axle isn't given its fair share of the spotlight. While other components like blingy wheels and handlebars get all the glory, the humble axle clocks in day in and day out with no recognition and little appreciation, and is only really criticized when things go wrong. This is becoming a through axle sob story. Anyways, I suppose what I'm trying to say is that the Robert Axle project has done a fantastic job identifying a gap in the market, and making through-axle replacement for your bike as simple as it can possibly be. It's also the first place you want to go if you ever want to tow a cargo trailer or a kid trailer on your through-axle equipped bike, as they're sure to have exactly what you need. All right, well, that's going to do it for this one. I want to give Robert Axle Project a big thanks for working with me and giving this small YouTube channel a chance to represent the average cyclist. All the information for the Robert Axle Project is down in the description, so be sure to check them out if you have a minute. And as always, thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.